Hey there, everybody. My name is Kate and welcome to my platform. Now, rather than bore you with a whole bunch of instructions about subscribe and blah, 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 let's just get right to the topic, which is what is the difference between spirituality and religion? Okay. Um, there's a lot of buzzword stuff going around right now with our 144,000 light workers um, from Revelation. We've got star seeds. We've got energy healers. We've got Reiki. We've got all kinds of spiritual warrior spiritual warfare um, and we've got all kinds of stuff going on um, in churches and in homes and in every other place on the planet because not everybody celebrates their religion their spirituality in a building of a particular kind on a Sunday morning a Saturday morning or at 12 or whatever everybody is different and we don't all go to a building um, to have a church experience. So for me personally, um, the way that I view religion and spirituality is that religion is very much like buying a box of cake mix at the grocery store. You're going to get a prepackaged whatever, you know, if you want a chocolate cake, then you are going to go and select a chocolate cake and get all the ingredients, whatever you need. Um, but it's kind of prefab, it's already in that box, you just gotta put all the magic together. And guess what? It's gonna taste pretty much the same today when you make it as it will three years from now, unless they reformulate that recipe. However, you know, the standard Duncan Hines is gonna taste like your standard issue Duncan Hines, it's a cake mix. Now, that's kind of stick that into the religion idea for just one second, and I absolutely do not mean to offend anyone at all. These are just words and that's one of my biggest things is let us uh, learn how not to feel so threatened by somebody else's perception because we may be closer to being um, on the same page than we think sometimes we get butthurt about the words. Well, what does she mean? And you know, if we just can pause and give it a second to, you know, wait, oftentimes we're very, we're closer with people than we think we are. We just get tied up in, you know, linguistics and it's, you know, it's not necessary. <laughs> so um, anyway, as I'm going on, I got kind of distracted, so this is a perfect time to say, wow, star seeds, all that, what's that weird stuff? It's a weird thing where I can say, huh, okay, I'm going to use my spirituality that I, that I did not learn in a church specifically to listen inside to that still small voice that some would call Jesus, some would call God, some would call guide, some would call ancestors, some would call whomever, you know, however you name it, claim it, or rename it, I, I could care less. It's not my job to name what you're hearing. Um, you know, that's not my job. So uh, I like to very much let people know that that still small voice that you're calling Jesus is a knocking, are you gonna let him in? That's somebody else praying to Brahma, perhaps. I mean, we don't know. We have no hard and fast on, you know, address for God or the cosmology of it or cosmos doesn't have, you know, an address where we can find the big guy. So I'm going to go with that when we're praying to deities and offering up our sacrifice and our discipline and our integrity <laughs> and our devotion, then we are in the highest, most honorable, dignified position that we can be in and doesn't really matter who we're praying to because that's an ego thing. That's an ego thing. For me to have to label my God a certain thing and then tell you about it and you have to believe it with me, that's kind of me not really being able to stand up on my own and go, yeah, I just believe what I believe and I don't want that cake. I don't want the Duncan Hines from the store. I want to make my own cake. Thanks. I like the ideas that I learned in, you know, in the grocery store with ideas of looking at different boxes of cakes that were pre-made. Um, and I really just like the idea of going to the store and I'll shop for my own ingredients. Thanks. I might want to add a little, you know, extra sugar. I might want to add a little different kind of sugar. I might want to add something else. Peanuts. You never know. <laughs> Unless I'm highly allergic. And then, <laughs> um, but I might want to add my own flavoring to make my own special recipe. If I'm not much of, a, of an avant-garde or a warrior or a mind that's willing to step outside the box and really, you know, go out there, I might not even know that it is possible to bake a cake without um, getting the box. You can just get all the little ingredients. That came as a shock, I got to tell you. I was a grown woman. Um, when I realized that, what do you mean baking from scratch? What, what, what's that? What do you mean? What are you talking about? 
not, I mean, bakery items, like baking a cake. I remember being so uh, taken with myself because I made a two or three tier cake for my um, eldest child's first birthday and it took all day and I never did it again. I made the icing from scratch, the cake, I mean, everything. And to be very honest with you, there isn't even a picture of it anymore and it really wasn't all that good and it wasn't worth it. <laughs> so the difference though is that me shopping for my own uh, way of expressing my spirituality through religious studies, um, that's going to be a cake that tastes a whole lot sweeter and a whole lot better because I've gotten better and better and better about selecting the ingredients that I'd really like to have and it's very much worth it to me to spend all day, you know, baking my cake um, because it's definitely going to taste really good. It absolutely is. It does. Um, there is definitely something to be said for sitting in a discipline of any kind um, on a regular basis and learning the the doctrine and the theology, the, the um, protocols, the codes of conduct, however you want to look at that. There is something to be said for the discipline of going and sitting every week and listening. And the Bible's got good stuff in it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against religion. It's just that we need to expand and go further. Those are just the starting points. You know, you're born. Um, many of us are just given whatever spiritual text we're given or you know assume to be okay you're gonna go with the the c word you're going christian um or you're going c word catholic or you're going j word Ugh, you know um <laughs> whatever religion we are, we're born into it kind of. And, you know, me personally, I didn't go to a specific church um, regularly throughout. I wasn't raised with one particular doctrine. I was raised with a whole mishmash of it's Sunday and the bus is going to come and get the kids and bye, y'all go be holy. Um, and I totally get it because, I mean, I get it. The kids are going to be gone for a few hours and uh, that's great. It's not so great was that it was a far right, um, very evangelical uh, scary Pentecostal, like, you know, very, very scary group of people um, that, you know, what I was saying earlier about if we find a different way that's not quite so, you know, to, to say things, I now understand from when I was six that we're on a, a, a much closer page of being able to understand one another, that Pentecostal church and me. However, at the time, that was so scary and so abrasive and so much of me not understanding what I was hearing, you going to hell, you know, that was a lot for a little kid. Um, that, that was a bit much. It was a little scary. I was scared. Um, <laughs> not scared enough to convert all the way. Exactly. I was still kind of a hellion, but you know, I mean, I've always been a rule breaker, but anyway, I was terrified. And so, you know, when we're not on that same page, we're going to make judgments about things that we don't understand. And I was actually much closer to agreeing with that Pentecostal church because it was very much fundamentally um, rooted in the Bible. And as I said, the Bible's got some banging stuff in it. Jesus said really good things. The parables are, you know, they're excellent. Read the red stuff, not so much the other stuff. And, you know, that's offensive to some. I'm sorry. However, you know, for me, the inspiration, the nourishment, the food, I don't want to eat all the bread that on the table. I want to get to the meat, you know? I want to get right to the meat. <laughs> and, and that's what I want to eat. I don't want to fill up on all the bullshit bread, quite frankly. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, that's me personally. So the beauty of realizing as you're ascending and evolving, you know, just growing more mature emotionally and spiritually is the allowance that other people are allowed to chill and do their thing. They're allowed to believe or not believe or believe in that or not believe in that. And it's my job <laughs> to mind my business <laughs> and keep my nose out of what it is that other people are doing um, regarding their religion, their faith, their spirituality, and their afterlife, man. If you believe in hell and that's where you're going, then you know, don't bother to pack a bag, it'll burn. Um, if you don't believe that, then, you know, okay. Whatever you choose to believe is what you choose to believe. And I'm respecting that and learning how to allow other people to have that space, even though I don't agree with it. It's my story. It's my timeline. It's my reality channel. It's those key words that I use. It's my life, you know, and whatever isn't my life, uh, that's not my business. So I just need to keep tuning into that spirituality thing of still small voice, still small voice. Where is that? Because all I hear is a of my human being screaming. You know, when I feel my or hear myself being very judgmental and kind of snarky and finding the reason why something's wrong or bad immediately, that's not the still small voice. That's how I can tell. The still small voice is not a butthole. 
Mine isn't anyway. <laughs> and I'm not going to believe anybody that tells me that uh, their still small voice can scream at them. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into that discussion. I'm just going to say, wow, you've got some very different instruction and, and download information than what I'm getting. I, I ordered a kinder, gentler version. <laughs> so um, it makes it less confusing that, you know, spirit doesn't have a reason to be anthropomorphized through the human understanding. Spirit does not need to punish. Spirit does not need to thump up thump us on the head and the angels don't stand around not in my experience you're not standing around going 10 10 just passed that what is this is this kate just dumb she's not getting this what the heck you know it's not like that once i really understood that oh this is about building faith this is about building faith that whatever makes the sun rise in the morning and the moon to do his job when it's time and you know the seasons to change and babies to be born and nature to be as phenomenal as it is whatever's running all that if i have faith that the sun is going to come up tomorrow why don't i have faith that i can have other beautiful things happen might be that i'm not noticing the beautiful sunrise that might be one of them we take a lot of stuff for granted and religion you know, it can help us when we go to that church on Sunday mornings and we sit down. That can help us sometimes if we're talking about, you know, finding the beauty. If we're finding the most reprehensible sinner in the bunch, though, it can turn into a dog pile and a gossip session. And that's really all it is. And spirituality for me, 11, 11. There's too many synchronicities. There's too much when you get into that flow. It's just a constant bombardment of it. Um, and I'm super grateful because it isn't something that just magically transforms and changes like that. However, it is something that changes and does pick up its own speed exponentially the more you exercise the, ha exercise the habit of how am I going to have faith that the sun's coming up tomorrow? How am I going to have faith that summer will be here when it's time? How am I going to have faith that I can make it through this, that I have the strength, that I'm not going to lose my mind, that I'm not going to be so depressed I can't stand myself, that I'm not going to be so angry I don't, you know, harm someone or harm my own self or say something unto word or do something you know unseemly how can i be guaranteed that uh, uh, the sun of course it's going to come up tomorrow duh <laughs> and how do you grow that i mean can i tell you that i have solid faith in 100 percent of what i'm doing all the time i have as much faith in 100 percent of what i'm doing as i do the sun coming up in the morning go ahead and believe that you 12 12 i mean do you see this believe that and you're believing a lie because of course we're all here learning faith. If we had 100% faith, <laughs> we probably would be so evolved. We wouldn't have our bodies. We'd be in 5D and beyond and, you know, doing all of these things, light bodies, activating, etc. And if you don't know what all of that is, continue to watch this series. It's going to continue on with what spirituality is and evolving and all of the beautiful frequencies that come from outer space that I'm not just making up stuff. You know, us, us woo-woo folks, us hippie weird folks, we just make stuff up. No, there's actual frequency and, and sound that comes from outer space and it affects us. We have um, effect from all of these things that happen during planetary lines, alignments and transitions and Mercury retrograde and solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, you know? We are affected by all of it. There's not one piece of Earth that can have something happen here that it doesn't go right around to the other side of the earth and have it affect it over there. Ain't anybody else on the earth gonna get out of here alive any more than I am. We're born to die. It's a matter of how will you be born to live before you die. Now, there's a ton, a plethora. You could go on for weeks and weeks and weeks into infinity because there are over seven, eight billion people on the planet, then you can be sure there's over seven or eight billion different ways to express your spirituality, your religion, et cetera. If you wanna go into the, the, um, the store and buy yourself a prepackaged cake mix, then by all means do, you know? Maybe you buy that cake mix and then you buy the ingredients for a small, you know, uh, muffin or something, and you start growing your faith like that um, by doing little incremental steps, baby steps towards that end goal of I am faithful. And you speak affirmatively with belief. And if you don't believe it, then you keep speaking it and saying those truthful statements at whatever level of truth you can say. I want to believe that. I'm willing to believe that. And go. Now, if that interests you, great. 
run with it. I've got a million and one other ideas um, to discuss, and I'm going to keep it under 15 because I hear that's the, you know, um, how you get the algorithm to like your stuff better, whatever. This is a message people need to hear. Most people don't want to hear because it means we need to change, and most of us, we just don't like change, you know? I personally, I like to shake it up. I like to be a little bit of a disruptor, so have a great day. Get on in your skin and get within. You're divine. It's absolutely fine. Get on in there, friend. See you next time.